Okay. Camera good to go? Uh -huh. Camera good to go? Yeah. Is it on? Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to call the Dunbarton Board of Selectmen meeting to order for Thursday, July, July <laughs> January 26th. It's being 7 o'clock. All um, selectmen are present. Town administrator is present. We call in for the citizens of Dunbarton. It's Mr. Robert Martell. Thank you, Robert. And in the audience, we have the, uh, the chief of police, Chief Ramana. Thank you for coming tonight. All right. Uh, we have a lot of things to get through, gentlemen. I'll make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes from January 12, 2023. Um, I didn't have any amendments. Any other amendments on those? I don't do so. As written, then. I'll second that. All in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Dave? Aye. I make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of January 12, 2023. I'll second Justin's motion. Discussion, they do not have to be sealed. No. All, any, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll make a motion to approve the Friday, January 20th, 2023 meeting minutes as amended at 9 a.m. I'll second those. Any discussion on those? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll make a motion to approve the 10.29 a.m. non-public <coughs> meeting minutes of Friday, January 20th, 2023. I'll second that. And that was general. Uh, they do not, do not have to be sealed. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll make a motion on the 10.45 a.m. non-public meeting minutes, Friday, January 20th, 2023. As amended, Dave? Yes. I'll second those. Okay, they do not, also do not have to be sealed. If you sign those, if you'd be so kind, we can pass them on to uh... Hold on that. I'm sorry? You want to vote on that? All in favor of the minutes as presented? Aye. 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 We'll do more Cotton on one. Okay, I'm going to open up for public comment. Bob Lastro. No, okay. sir. Yes, sir? Ah. Please, for the record. Uh, just for the record, Don Larson, flags around Dunbarton. This is a flag that we had on the town hall prior to the siding going in and everything else. And I'd like to have permission from the selectmen to put it back up on the town hall. And you tell me, you know, what location you want it. And I'll see if our partners, uh, the phone company with their bucket truck, can do the job. There's a flagpole, a flagpole in front. In the front? No, this is for this building. Yeah, the library. Yeah. No, no library, library. The library. The new entrance. Okay. Over the new There's entrance. a main flagpole in the, in, in, the, in the front. So you want to put that in the back on the new one? Um, it did look good when he had it flying up there on the construction. The only thing is I don't know if there's an etiquette to having two flags on a building or not. Well, one's not on the building. One's in the, in the flagpole. Right. Um, it did look nice by the entrance before there, I, I think. In the, in the back, in the rear of the building. Yeah, we had it on the corner. Right. A lot of people come in that way and they don't see the one in the front, you know. Well, it's 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 different. I, I'm ambivalent. I don't really have it one way or the other. I just want to make sure it's securely mounted to appropriate well, and securing. Well, uh, if you put long enough screws in it, will be. Plus, I've got a wooden doll here that I put inside to give it extra strength. Okay. Uh, who do you want? Who, uh, who installed it last time? Well, I'm going to see if the phone company will with their bucket truck. Okay. Um, it's, please understand, it's still a construction site, so I, I just don't want you to interfere with uh, any of the construction right. workers. Well, I was hoping that, you know, I see Bobby's truck there. Where they yeah, coordinated with Bobby, I think. And yeah. Because they hate to be on, you know, we're supposed to be out of his sight, out of that area, when we're, but this is semi-town official business. You're going to so. go to the right of the door? Huh? Go to the right of the door, maybe. Right, right hand side of the door. Looking maybe. at it. Yeah, looking at, do looking at it. Maybe above that basement door. Yeah, so it's high enough. Right. right. And then so there's right a the floodlight on it, so that it'll be illuminated at all times. So it's not like the telephone poles. <laughs> <laughs> Don, I would probably center it on that basement door. Okay. So on the basement the door. Side, yeah. Right. Okay. Because you got the round arch on the on the main door, so you yeah. don't want to interfere so, with that. Uh, uh, okay, by the, by the uh, 
Uh, centered above the basement door. Above the basement door, okay. And try to hit studs. Okay, <laughs> we'll do that. That's probably um, something pretty big. I was asked to ask you in regard to the RSA to accept the $40,000 from the Casanos. Um, we don't need to accept that because it's going to the 501C. Yeah. So I think we had Lean put a consensus in there from the board to and you guys. And I already sent that to Enid. She said thank you. <sighs> so I... Thing is, I, it's the so we give you the thumbs up, right? Okay. The thing is, your board is the one that's got to write a letter to the Casanos, a thank you note, and a note out of acceptance from your committee as a five hundred one C, so they can use it if they want to need use it for tax purposes, for example. Okay. But you should acknowledge them. I'll pass that on to the chairman. Yeah, you, you should acknowledge that uh, as a, as a board. Yeah. And so they can get get some uh, like a it's like a affirmation of the donation. Okay. Yeah, so then they have something to right. give to their tax guy. Correct. Okay. Well, I okay. will go ahead and do that. Then. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Okay. Uh, still open to public comment? I just have two quick things for, for public comment. Um, the first one is uh, if the board hasn't seen it already, I'm sure you're aware, there's a House Bill 647, um, which is another push to end qualified immunity. Um, which we could get into the nuts and bolts of that another time, but this um, is for police officers, so they don't—they basically for all, all municipal employees. So they're not protected under the law. It's a—it's a very, um, <clears throat> very scary thought, um, and it's definitely something to keep an eye on. There was a public hearing today. I don't know how it went, but it affects all municipal employees, not just police officers. Um, so that's something definitely to keep an eye on. It, it seems to come about every year. It was uh, ITO last year. Didn't gain a lot of traction, but it seems to keep coming back. And this is in regards to protecting the employees or not protecting? Protects qualified immunity is a is a Supreme Court doctrine that protects all yep. uh, government employees, and, um, and basically, so they, they don't get sued for making Personally. innocent right. mistakes and, and things of that nature. But if qualified immunity is repealed or removed, uh, it would it would be a, a damper on in lawsuits, right? And it put a damper on wanting to join any. It, it would absolutely. So I just I throw it out there as something just to. Just to keep an eye yeah, on Yeah, make us not want to do our job. Well, either. that's <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's, it's yeah a, they it's they a just topic. sent me um, the new updated um, guidebook yep. related to all those things. Yep. It's like 167 pages there's, long. Yeah, there's a lot. So I can send it to you guys if you think you might be interested in just like, glossing over it. But it's <clears throat> and then um, why I have you here in public yeah. comment, um, you had a second item. You are going to tell me about a second item. Yeah, the, the other thing I just, I wanted to let the board know, we've been getting uh, hammered with um, different scams and frauds, uh, grandchildren in jail scams, people calling saying that you have an arrest warrant, take all this money out, you pay us, the warrant will go away, things of that nature, and unfortunately we had an elderly resident uh, lose approximately $6,000 today. Um, someone actually drove to the house, picked up the money. Um, so we're working on that, but the reason I bring that to the board's attention, if, if anyone makes you aware, of a scam or, or they fell victim to a scam, please have them call us so we can do a report. We've, we've had four in the last two days. Um, all different types of, of scams are, are really flooding in, unfortunately. Is there anything I can put on the website? just to Yeah, I can send you some stuff. Yeah, I, you probably have it on your website, but I think it'd be nice to do a double yeah, whammy, double shotgun. I'll send, I'll send you some stuff, and we're working with Mary. Once uh, upstairs is open, we're going to have the Consumer Protection Bureau from the AG's office come in and do a public scam awareness presentation similar to what you did in the past yeah we're just we're trying to get the word out there because unfortunately most of the time it's our elderly residents that are falling victim to this and we're talking thousands of dollars we had one last year that was i think 15 grand but yeah. i'm getting an inheritance according to one email i'm getting an inheritance i just yes. got to send some money forward so i can collect that's it right. just give them all your information they get very brazen they'll they'll come yeah, right exactly. to your house to collect the money that's pretty uh that is yeah, brazen. Crazy. very very brazen very intrusive so I just want to make the board aware that that's we've seen a huge yeah. uptick in that. I, I, why I got you on the spot talking about scams? Sure. Could you comment upon the police benevolent associations calling us and asking us for money? It's Ooh. tough. There there are some legitimate uh, associations and, and benevolent associations that call soliciting donations, but there's more often than not, it's most likely a scam. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I just wanted to comment on that because the thing is, uh, I said to you, the police chief works for me. What should I tell him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I don't think you'll, you'll find a lot of legitimate organizations cold calling like that. It's, yeah. it's kind of a thing of the past. And then when they get mad at you because you're, yeah. you're questioning him, they say, well, don't you believe in your police department? It's like, well, not the that, way you're talking. That's a big red flag right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you.
All right, you stick around. You've got more work for you. Like, like to do. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll bring it back to the board again. Uh, let's go through some public business. Um, draft warrant for 2023 with changes applied. Lean. Okay, you want so to talk to it? Everything we have for review this evening has been discussed the last two meetings. So I hope that this will be our final review. Um, basically, the changes that the board has uh, requested that I make, and it will go right to the warrant. I'll, I'll go over this quickly. I Again, see the workforce housing on there. Do we get the dates cleared up on that? The dates, she confirmed with our attorney that because it was one public hearing that they met the guidelines. Okay. So that's why that is there. Um, and when I was having the attorney review ours, I happened to pop hers on there and he actually made comment to what she had put there and wanted more information. So she worked with him because she had not heard back from him modified it so and then he gave the blessing so this is the wording that's been approved by our town attorney for the our, the one zoning ordinance that we're looking to propose before the voters this year we're going to skip the budget and we'll discuss it in other places article five is the same repeat what i did put in there uh, from prior year is the uh, estimated tax rate 0 0.0345 no change to the wording and that is rounded to three cents. One thing that I did notice when you get to some of these other documents that we'll be going over is that if you're typing this information in the a calculator, you can see how it says 0 .0345. Excel may take that and actually increase it a penny. So there are some variables in Excel versus a calculator. For the for my rounding calculations, I chose the three cents. I did notice there was a two cent difference in the total on Excel versus a calculator. Okay. So I just want to point that out. Three cents is the uh, estimated tax rate for Article Five. No changes in the wording. Article Six, the board approved its five thousand deposit into the uh, transportation capital reserve. Again, that is point zero one two three three rounds to one penny. Okay. No changes in the wording. Article 7 is the amount that the board approved at last meeting, and it calculates to 0.17265. My rounding comes to 17 cents. <clears throat> Article 8, we had the town attorney review that to um, <coughs> the, the as selectmen as agents to expend from the fire department, which the chief said he would speak on, and there is no tax rate impact on that. Now, didn't we reference an RSA originally on that? Nope. 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 And then, uh, because that's completely different from the land purchase one, which had an RSA. It's still a capital reserve fund, the same as this. Yeah, but all you're doing is, is um, appointing an agent to expend. That's the so that the legislative body is doing that. So rather than do it at town meeting, which John said he's had the opportunity to buy a used new... Uh, a, a piece of equipment, he can't buy it because, or make an offer because he has to wait until town meeting. So he's asked the board to. I don't know why you couldn't do the same thing, simple thing with the land then. Uh, we did, but that's you saw the, the response that he gave. <coughs> I say needs to be adopted for that. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Um, Article 9 is 12925, that's the $10,000 deposit. Plus, the um, police department asked that the surplus from the sale of that vehicle be deposited into this fund. So that is twelve nine twenty five with two thousand nine twenty five coming from surplus for uh, ten thousand dollars from taxation. That is a point zero two four six six, which my rounding is two cents. Uh, next, Article ten is the purchase of a new vehicle. The total cost for. Equipment and installations, 53,717, with 12,925 coming from the capital reserve um, deposit, uh, capital reserve fund established for this. And then there's also an additional 12,000 that will be withdrawing from the police special detail revolving fund. So the um, taxation amount is 28,792, or seven cents rounded. Chief, while you're having, I just want to make sure you're going to be speaking to these. I will, and, and one of the things that I'll speak to as well is, uh, I know it can't be calculated in the warrant, but if that passes, we're going to sell one of our 2017 SUVs at auction. And I reached out to the auctioneer, and he's generally seeing around eight grand 
um, for that model if it's in decent shape. So that would be money coming back, obviously, to the to the general fund. Do you need sawdust for the transmission? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Article 11, there are no changes to the wording. The board decided to set a $20,000 deposit into the capital reserve. Uh, that is a point zero four nine rounded is five cents. Article 12 is the $5,000 that we wanted to um, deposit into the land purchase capital reserve. And that is the equivalent of point zero one two three three rounded to one penny. 12, Dave. Do we need 12? I mean, we have $47,000 in there. You want to bring it up to 50, but I think it's, but we were kind of tying that into uh, that other. Uh, yeah, we could leave it at the 47 if you want to. I don't <clears throat> Justin, what do you think? It's one cent. Well, if you take it doing 12 and huh? Yeah. It's one cent. I don't think it's it much matters. Really matter. Yeah. <clears throat> She's got it done. Let's leave it. Oh, let's leave it. Okay. Can we go back to just, um, uh, just to put a little bit of money in there in yeah. case we ever do for the yep. future? Can we go back to ever ten for a second? The building or something yeah. and need it. Back to number ten. Yep. Did we put the twenty nine twenty five in the revolving equipment fund? No, the one you have to put it into the capital reserve. The only time you can put money into the the revolving fund is through special duty services. Right. So you got down here that you um, are withdrawing twelve thousand nine twenty five from the which really, it's ten from that and twenty nine twenty five from the. No, but if you look at number nine, number nine, nine puts two thousand nine hundred twenty five into it, and they have ten thousand. They're going to have twelve nine twenty five, and number ten just takes it out and spends it. To see if the town will to raise the appropriate. So we're putting the money into the capital reserve first, along with what the the. Chief asked to put towards that capital reserve from surplus from the sale of his car. And so, Dave, three there's three pots that's coming from. It's coming from the fifty. I, I know all that. Oh, okay. I'm looking at nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See if the town will vote to raise an appropriate sum of twelve thousand hundred dollars to be added to the establishment in twenty twenty. This sum would be offset on the other side. Two thousand. Okay, because I know we're doing ten thousand. Do you remember we wanted to keep these separate? The reason why we have to do it this way, Dave, is if in the event ten fails, just just for yeah example, if you include it in number ten and you don't include it in number nine. Then that two thousand nine twenty five stays in this general fund surplus and it goes nowhere. No, because you can pull a twenty nine twenty five out of general surplus. Still, even if the ten fails, as long as they're separated, we talked about making those separate so they were clear for the taxpayers when we go to town meeting. I thought that the consensus of the board was to we leave thought, it the way I thought we originally talked about because it, it didn't really make a difference because I said why well, keep them separate yeah. and and then I said because read in this. case one one fails or one passes because when you read through and you this, guys said it didn't right. matter because it was pennies on the dollar right when you read through this you're using the ten thousand that's in there from last year's right appropriation not this year's and the way this reads it's like you're using the ten thousand from this year well that's how you did it the, uh, last year. We did it exactly the same way. We put in ten thousand in the capital reserve, so it added ten to the existing ten thousand. Or actually, there was one thousand in the capital reserve. We put ten thousand in, and then you, in the very next warrant to buy a car, you asked to take ten thousand out. I think this is very clear. People will say, "Well, we have we have these." Funds. I mean, these revolving funds. And all we're doing in number nine is we've taken the, the proceeds of the sale of, our, of an old vehicle, added it to the ten thousand dollars, which we're going to add anyways, and putting it all in one easy little one motion. Yeah, yeah, I thought we talked about separating it first, and then I said, yeah, in case one passes and one failed, and then we roundabout talked about it for a while, and then we decided at the end of the day keep, keep them it the same. Now, if ten fails, because, because ten. It's only two cents that they're voting on. 
and if 10 fails, he still has the 29, 25 in his revolving fund. Yeah. yeah. The capital reserve fund, excuse me. The revolving fund is separate. Well, he still has enough money in his um, fund. Right. So it you're using the 2023 taxation amount instead of using the 2022 taxation amount out of that fund. How much? That's why I want it separate. Because you're using so you one as your third pulling. article? One for 10, one for 2009? That's what I wanted. That way it keeps no, it clear. No, we, 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 we disagreed with you last time. I know you disagreed with me. But, but the thing is, to, it, when it, you're going to go to explain that to the taxpayer, I'm telling you right now, they're not going to read that appropriately. And we're going to be fumbling on the floor. Where all you have to do is put one more line in there, keep the twenty nine twenty five clear and all on its own, and put the ten thousand dollars, just like the other one. Instead of combining those two and confusing them, I'm telling you when you go in front of the taxpayers, they're not going to read that and be able to understand that. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible for well, them. Well, the speak, like the speak, the speak. If I was going to explain it, I'm saying we we have a police vehicle and equipment reserve fund. Every year we add ten thousand dollars. In addition to the $10,000 which we're voting on, we had a sale of one of our junk vehicles. And the junk vehicle created an increase of $2,925. We're adding $10,000 plus the, the, the proceeds from the sale. Of Again, if you keep it separate, then you, it's very easy to explain. Yeah, I don't know, Justin, what do you think? I don't see the point of keeping it separate. Well, I've been at plenty of these town meetings. I'm telling you right now. If you don't have it clear, you have trouble explaining it. All right. If yeah, we, I, mean, I, if I, haven't, I haven't sat in front and explained. Well, the thing it, is, so it, I, you're, so you're going to be a, we're going to be augmenting your explanation. Right. Can you explain that? They're going to uh, burn me at the stake. I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be augmenting his department because I'm the liaison for it, and I think it's clear if it's separate. And I don't see any reason we can't have one more line item to keep it separate. You just want to burn more trees. No, I I, I agree with Justin. It's, it's such a small amount of money. Well, that was your guys' commotion about it last time we talked. Right. It's such a small amount of money. Why keep it separate? The amount of money doesn't matter. The way it reads is unclear. It's basically, I mean, however you guys want to do it, you go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you right now, it'd be a lot more clear just to have that additional warrant article, putting the twenty nine twenty five into that fund, and then adding $10,000 to it this year. So in 2020, Dave, Article 10 was to vote to raise and appropriate $10,000 to be added to the Peace Vehicle Equipment Capital Reserve Fund in 2020, established in 2020, and for that purpose. Yeah, the sums I know. to come from taxation. And then the very next article, you withdrew the money. That's, we know that. That's not the so, point. The point is, he doesn't want to con confuse the 2925, and he thinks that could. With taxes. With taxes. Yeah, I just think it's just so much simpler just to put the extra line in there. But we do do uh, oftentimes money from different sources all the time. I, I know Don Larson's uh, articles are often from sale of something from surplus and from capital reserve. L um, last year, he had two, and his, uh, the expendable trust, then he had the cemetery trust. And then he had surplus because he had stuff encumbered that he wanted to use towards this project of the library. It happens often that we use multiple sources. And the same goes with Article 10. Article 10 is asking from capital reserve, from special duty detail, and from taxes. There's three sources right there. That's the gentleman going to be on the spot. Do you feel comfortable? I'm, I'm going to put some credence on how you feel about it. Do you feel comfortable the way it's written, or would you rather have two separate lines? I'm putting you on the spot. I'm fine either way. I think uh, I think it's it's going to be an interesting sell coming back to the pot asking for another car to begin with. Right. Um, I'm trying to do it as cheap as possible, as you can see. Um, Inexpensive. And my only thing is, do is if we break it into three, then your department has three warrants as well. And so they're we, voting on three separate, whether the taxation is. So right, right now the no balance. No matter what. The balance in the capital reserve is ten thousand dollars. So if we do it separate and ten fails, or let's say this nine is at a ten thousand dollar and it fails, and then we have twenty nine twenty five that gets deposited into it, he's short seven thousand, or he's going to be depleting this down to three thousand, which he could. But in order to make ten work to take out money, 
There's ten in there now. If you take ten out, you're left at zero. Doesn't right? But he's, 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 he's still he's no he's missing. He's still missing three thousand. Twenty nine, twenty five. If nine fails. Yeah. May I ask a, a dumb question? Sure. Say when I get the invoice for the car, um, can I that twenty nine twenty five that's in the surplus? Can I just put a note? You know, please. You can't spend surplus unless it's in, okay. Okay. No, so that's what we're doing for you yeah. by doing this. I just think they should be separate. If you always want to leave them, fine. But they should be separate, I believe. Okay. And I'm the selectman that's going to get up there to back him on it. I don't need another candy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm fine, Dave, it, to speak to your point. You, you're our liaison. You're going to get up and, and speak to it, and I'm going to speak to it. So if, if you and think I'm that, the one that developed that capital reserve fund, yeah, and I've that. spoken to it, I think, every year since then. Yeah. And we've had a new car almost every year since then, and I just I want clarity for the public to see what we're doing. Yeah. And I think by listing it that way, it's not clear. Only because you're the liaison and you're going to speak on it. If you want it separate, then let's separate it. But I feel like we beat this to death last on, night. on the last meeting. So let's not talk about it anymore. If you want it separate because you're the liaison and you're going to speak on it, then let's separate it into a separate warrant. That would make me happy. Okay. <coughs> Lean, let's do it. Let's do it separate it. So we'll have 9, 9B, nine 9, well, it'll be different numbering. Similar language, just one for ten thousand dollars regular straight vanilla ten thousand into the uh, uh, police equipment capital reserve fund, and then separate vanilla one of twenty nine twenty five into the same capital reserve fund. And then you just got to talk to this is one's the, the normal reserve money right. we're deposit every year, and the but second one is like the money we got for the sale exactly. of a. Because that's what I said at the last meeting. I said, oh, people, will vote. what if people want to vote down the 10000 And you guys said, no, it's such a small amount they're going to vote. They'll either vote yeah. it down or it's well, such a small amount. Well, the thing is, amount. I agree with you. you since Dave saying. is going to speak to it, I think it's a... Uh, we I'm, should I'm, give I'm, him the option. I'll give him the option. And the other thing I don't like is um, we're appropriating money for a capital reserve fund. And we have those other ones. We've got 14000 20000 70000 they're all straight dollar amounts that people see, and they use those dollar amounts in the capital reserve fund, as Lean said. So when you mix that twenty nine twenty five in there, then you come up with an obscure number this year, and it doesn't match what we're trying to do on those capital reserve funds. I don't think we should mix that into that capital reserve okay, fund. I got it. All right, let's move on. Move on. We got ten. We okay. kill ten. Okay, so number the eleven. New, the new ten will be eleven, and <clears throat> that one is that one okay? Yeah. Twelve. Yeah, just change yeah. the numbering. Whether one or the other fails. Hopefully we have enough to cover that $12,925. Yep. Because yep. right now there's only 11000 in it. And I'm assuming that this 2925 will pass, but it's not It's not taxes. a taxed amount, so. Okay. So that's 11. It's going to, two, thousand, two, it's going to be no brainer. <clears throat> okay. And the new number 12, 20000 deposit into the Highway Capital Reserve. No change to the wording. as point zero four nine rounded to $0.05. Cents. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, no, new number 13 is going to be $5,000 to deposit into the land capital reserve. You decide we're going to leave it there. It's only 0 .01233 rounded to a penny. One thing just for a note, I do like to leave that on there, Mike, just for this one year because I quite frankly forgot there was a reserve for land and didn't realize it was 47000 there. So it's kind of keeps it in the back of your mind that, okay, we do have that money. Right. I think, I think even that amount we should still deposit in there because... Eventually, I think we will need to look into some more right. land for Anything something. Is, uh, less of an impact on voters down the road, of right. residents. Yeah. Just yeah. even asking for a little bit more. And I'll probably keep that as a capital reserve fund when I go to Donna with our It's on the list of yeah. our capital reserve. So yep. it should be, you yep. know. Yep, okay. Uh, the new number 14 will be mill foil. Uh, the mill foil. That's 2720. It's a withdrawal from the capital reserve for 1360. And accepting a grant for thirteen sixty, it's a zero uh, cent impact to the taxes. Can, can I just um, one thing that when I was writing my report, um, it, Gorm, we looked at Milford not only for Gorham Pond but say Dunbarton Ponds. Yeah. And thing is, why we're kind of restricting it in the in the measure to this is specific because the Milford has only been found in right, Gorham Pond. Right. Right. But if it happens to move to the others, right. then this will have to change. 
because we did that. Other ponds. Didn't we rename that as an invasive land species at one of the meetings? We did. We did make that change. Oh, yeah. I think Bob was right. here. We did it as an invasive no, 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 land. No, wait a minute. It is there. It says for milfoil control in Gorham Pond, which is correct because that's where they they need to test. Right. And it's to come from the invasive plant species capital reserve fund. So it's correct. Okay. In the event that they they scout. Um, Kimble Pond or Stark Pond, right. and they yeah. find it, then the following year, we're going to need, need to revise where Yeah, but that is why we changed that. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, we wanted, species it goes across the entire Dunbar. Correct. So there and there could be others than milfoil in the ponds as right. well. And then in, in the event they eradicate that, they can still use, the, there are other types of invasive okay. species in yep. the pond that we can use it for. Um, 15. New 15, see the town vote to close out the cemetery fund. Maintenance Care Trust Fund established in 1988 to pay all monies in such fund to the town treasurer. We had the town attorney review that. There's only $12 and change in there. Um, at Originally, the cemetery trustee was trying to move it from this fund into another. And that's can we lot. put the dollar amount on that? We you can talk to, to it. On it. We'll talk to it. Because there will be interest, Dave. And if you put a specific, you can only take a specific. If there's three or four cents, then you can't close it out. Could put an approximate, I guess. Well, we'll talk to it in that sense. Yeah, and the the DRA will not take an approximate. That's why we <coughs> round everything to the dollar and not include any pennies. But it gives us whoever's talking to it something to talk about. Right, and uh, so the number, the new number sixteen was the uh, cemetery's uh, trustee's request to establish a new expendable trust, and the original wording re referenced in the RSA that was for the sale of a uh, cemetery plus two. Two something, two nineteen RSA, and that doesn't apply. But in order to establish it, we did give uh, the the okay on this wording. See the town will vote to establish a cemetery monument expended expendable trust fund for RSA thirty one nineteen A for additional maintenance and upkeep of the cemetery monuments, benches, and cornerstones, and to appoint cemetery trustees as agents to expend and to further to authorize the acceptance of. <coughs> Privately donated gifts, legacies, and devices to deposit into the fund. So that was as recommended by town attorney. That's correct. Okay, go keep going. Any S questions, Dave? Nope. New seventeen. New seventeen. You have two. This, I added the the one that's highlighted DRA wording. Wording. You can see how s short it is, but that one will require additional explanation. I personally like the the top one. It was recommended by um, Municipal Resources Inc. They have um, applied this to many communities that they review and um, for qualifying veterans credits, and it has it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's the uh, the law has changed so that it allows current active um, <coughs> active duty service members to members to get the optional veterans credit. So it's not just for people that have retired yep. from the service. Yeah. Service. Got it. In other words, the, the, the lengthy explanation explains why we're doing it. Right. Yeah, I would use that. Yep. Are you okay with that? I just wanted to give it out, put it out there because... Um, yeah. It gives people more yep. explanation. Right. And then, again, the our new 18 and new 19 are your typical to hear reports of agents, auditors, committees, and other officers here to okay. the and then transact any other business. Down below, I listed the Articles 5 through 12 with their uh, tax rate impact. Articles 13 through 18 is a zero impact, and when you add these together, they come to 36 cents. In my Excel spreadsheets, which have like a six or seven digit of number, it does round to 38 cents. So there's okay. a flexible. Lean, please make a note to yourself. Okay. Change the numbers in the bottom too. Change the numbers of the articles. Well, this that's not going to be there. That's just for our own okay. reference. Okay. Okay. But even, even for our reference, I just I just changed the numbers because we're, ch we're changing the numbers. Oh, okay. You see know what I'm saying? Well, this is going to go in the trash can as soon as you say it's <laughs> good to go. Once you get those okay. We're, uh, we're good to go. But the thing is, we got to make this just the number change because we're adding that extra one. Okay. I think after that, we're good to go on it. <laughs> make the one change. Yeah. Take the numbers. Yeah. And then yeah. I'll have a final yeah. version for you to look at next week. Um, because the public hearing is the following Thursday. Yeah, they look good. Yep, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm good, okay. brother. Really. Good consensus, Lee. Um, I'd like to review the draft revenues that the board had proposed. The only change that you had made um, was to increase 
the um, transfer station funds from 20,000 to 30,000, I believe it was. Where is that from? Let's see, interest total. Recycling income on the second page at the bottom. I increased it from the 20000 which I originally had brought it up to 30000 And then, Dave, you asked me to outline what the numbers were that we used when we projected the, the, uh, unanticipated, or the revenues to offset our operating budget. In the left-hand column, I added a color, uh, a, a, a new column, and it's highlighted in green on page 2. So the highway block grant was originally... Um, Projected at ninety thousand, it came in at one hundred two four thirty two, mm -hmm. which was revised by the DRA. The federal forest PILT was estimated at three thousand. DRA increased it to twenty uh, thirty two eighty eight. The um, uh, flood <coughs> one above it, yeah, uh, flood control. My mm -hmm. lines are flood yeah, control is reduced. Okay, so yeah, flood control was estimated at seventy thousand. We got a little bit less, sixty-eight seven seventy-six, and the DRA revised that at tax rate setting. And then the rooms and meals revenue was the big one. We had estimated one hundred thirty-five. It came in at two sixty-six seven twenty-two. And then of course the grant revenue, which includes, which was the two thousand twenty dollars for the milk oil. We had the New Hampshire retirement increase that in, um, bumped that up to eight thousand sixty-three. And the actual that's in the next column includes other things throughout um, grants that were small on a small scale and that were approved by the board to accept, to apply for the grants. And did okay. you, the so, highway block doesn't quite match. Did you mean to do that? Highway block. The one hundred two four thirty two. See you see the difference here. Um, one hundred two four thirty two and one hundred two four uh, zero thirty three. The rest all matches, so is why I'm asking. Well, the actual, oh, maybe she had it, she gave it to me less. Those are the numbers that I used with the DRA that I entered into the system. Which one? So, so the actual is what you're saying is... We're, we're off around three, $400, $399. I just didn't know if you made a typo there. I'm not sure, Dave. I'd have to just circle it and check it, Lee, next week or whatever. But The rest of them all match. Yeah. Okay, so basically the new numbers that we set the tax rate with... For that category, it was 450191 when mm -hmm. originally we had set it at $300,020. Yep. So what I did on the last page is I took the pre-tax projected revenues, and then I put the post-tax revised revenues. There's additional revenues out of the total excess of 150171 that we used towards the tax rate. So what I did is in that second to the right column, the 566209 that is the actual revenues for the year. What I did is I subtracted the uh, 74141 because we use that towards our, the article for the library. And then I subtracted this 150171 because we used it, we spent it. And if we spend it again, then we're going to be depleting our... Surplus. No, but a lot of that was money from the state too. The state, that's like correct. Like the women meals. So, based on that, that leaves us with excess revenues of seventy three thousand one sixty seven. So that's what I'm advising the board to use to offset twenty twenty three's operating budget from excess revenues without touching the surplus. This is all, so we had 300000 there, and we took the 74000 off. So last week we were at 223000 Correct. And now you're telling me there's only 73000 Well, if you if you add back the 150, which is what we use at tax rate setting, that does bring your number up. But I just wanted you to, to realize that there was some of that money that we used. I know, but I think... You're showing us, which I appreciate, where the 150 is. Mm -hmm. But that 150 was already taken out of those other revenue service, services that you showed us. So are you saying week. that? The 150 you're taken out twice, I think. I think your numbers last week were accurate. 
Because your revenue is when you showed us last week there. Included that 150. Yes. And you seem to think that the 150. You're taking it out again, so you're taking it. Yeah, you're taking it out twice. Because it was already used on tax setting, so all those revenues you showed us last week were after the tax setting rate in October. Correct, but if you look at the actual, it's included in that actual. These these new numbers from page two that are highlighted in green come to 450-191, which is part of the actual. But it's actually, we've already spent them. That was my, you see what I'm saying? If you look at the second page of green highlighted, we projected 300000 for that category. The DRA revised it to 45191. That carries into the actual column. I just didn't want to double count it and find out that we're, use, we're, we're spending down more revenue. And that was used in October to set the tax rate. Mm -hmm. But it's still being included in that five hundred and sixty-six thousand, one million five hundred and sixty-six thousand. Right, because you, DRA adjusts our, we submitted our numbers, DRA supplements their numbers, our numbers with their rev, additional revenues yep, for us, yep. i.e. room and mails, the big mm -hmm. one. It's a big one, yeah. So that number in the second to the right column, that's 1,566, <clears throat> 209. Just to give you an example, like if you look under the um, licenses, permits, fees, mm -hmm. your budget was 675, our actual was 813. Yep. But we didn't change that because we knew it was going to come in higher to right. help offset the increase. So take 813 minus 675, and how much is that? It was just one line item. Yeah. Wasn't affected by the DRA at all. It's a lot more than $73,000. We deducted the numbers twice here. Do you follow me on that, Mike? I do. We go back to that page here and just look at that one line. Just a one line, yeah. You know, and that's excess revenues right there. It's not affected by anything else. It's 138,000. Yeah, so somehow, somehow you're pulling the numbers out twice, Lane. I'm not sure how, but I. I'll have to work with you next week and go through okay. it. Okay. You um, follow me? Because just that one light item hasn't affected by the DRA at all is 138000 That even the building and permits is 19000 over, too. Yes, but if you look at the total revenues. Um, okay, so if I add in the. Okay, I see what you're saying. So now the new budget, for, which is column three. Is one million two sixty eight seven thirty, with which has the new revised. I think you might be right. Here. Yes, you're pulling that one fifty out twice. twice. I think you're so. Correct. You need the seventy three plus the one fifty, and that's your actual number. I agree, because this this new revised one yes. million two sixty eight exactly was after right. we set the tax rate. After yeah. we, you're right. They already took it out there. Yes. They already took it out. You're right. So we're adding back the one fifty. Yeah. You were right last week, because that's going to give you the right number. I was just. I guess I was overthinking it. Plus the 73167. So it's 223. In other words, you're all over. This is, if you look at this column here, this is the three. This is uh, the yes. budget. Okay. What's the number, Lynn? 223, 338. 338, which is the same number you gave us last week. Correct. That's I'm Rick trying to follow up with scores. Okay, so that's what we have for revenues. Yeah. Excess revenues. See? Follow that, Mike? I do. Add oh, that with that. Sorry. 223, 338. So I've added back the 150, 171. Yeah. And the 73, 167. Which matches last week's number. Correct. And I knew that that's what it was, but I, was, I thought for sure that I was overthinking it. It's those parentheses, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just look at that, look at your line. You have pre tax re projected revenues, post tax re revenues. So it's that 150 is right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's included in the total budget. So you add that with the 73, and you're exactly the same number. So yeah. that's what we have to use on that yeah, set revenues. for revenues. Okay. Now, the question is, how do we want to use it? Well, that? let's go through the rest, and then we'll look at them. Like yep. Think, yep. Right? Because we'll have the surplus with it afterwards. Okay, Lee, next, next item. Okay, so the longer um, 14 by... Um, Got it. Expenditures. We can use this for your public hearing. We can use it for the um, town meeting. Basically, what I did was I high, I verified the requested total, which is accurate. I noted the changes in column six, and I listed the increase in the right side of each category, just to highlight. Specifics like uh, yeah. what was the big increase in overall increase, decrease, the total increase for executive, for example, increase $9,640. So each group has the same references of larger ticket items that might have um, changed the, the budget, and then the overall increase is in the right and bold. The big change in general government, um, originally we had it at 150. <clears throat> I had changed it to 200, and the board decided to change it to 250. So, in that category, there's an increase of 119, 525, but the majority of it is for your government buildings. Yeah, and we can explain that. Explain one. that. Yep. Yeah. And then the other ones was some additional um, cleaning for the town hall library, and then 3,000 for the um, security monitoring. And that will take all those charges out of the building maintenance account and charge and post it to a separate money. Cemeteries had no, ch no change. Insurance went up slightly overall. It was the property liability, 3,420. Is the library on here? Yeah, it's on the very last page. Oh, it is. So I did, uh, everything else was presented as the departments had requested. Um, police department had an increase of 45,219 after you asked me to reduce it by 10. Um, fire department increased 11,556. Building department um, is an increase of 2,556. That's basically the um, payroll. No change to emergency management. Highway department saw uh, $18,114 increase. Uh, some of it was um, Payroll and then Materials. wood salt for okay. the most part. What gasoline? Too. That line six makes it very easy, Lane. I think that's fine. Okay, and then um, solid waste, same thing. Um, they went up 35000 The majority of it is um, in the solid waste part time increase, um, the um, wage increase for the full time, and then there were some decreases under the C and D and and RRA, I guess it was an MSW, we were able to contract with a new company. So overall increase was $35.93. Next budget is the welfare. Again, that's pretty much just the um, payroll increases. And recreation requested $1,000, so it's a $600 increase. Old home day is flat. <coughs> the library had um, presented a budget that had a slight increase, that's 11477 And then obviously part of the budget has to include the bond payment, which passed this past March. The first payment was broken into two parts, 28000 and the remainder is in, in August, and that will be a total of 179769 And then we added the new line for KTFCA maintenance for $1,000. So I don't believe there's any changes to the proposed budget as a whole. Now we have the added revenue that we have to look at. So what I did for you on the, <coughs> the snapshot that's on the pages, the short pages behind it, is just for your own understanding, is I took the bond payment out so that you can look at what the increase is as a whole over prior year. So the 2022 budget... Um, 26, 4, 5, 3, 3, 7. 
That's the actual. It's actually twenty seven eight eighty four two ninety seven. Yeah. And then the new budgets uh, without the bond is three million one oh two oh forty one, which is a an increase of three hundred seventeen seven forty four, which equates to eleven point four percent increase. And then with the bond payment, if I add that hundred and <coughs> nine back into it, the increase over <coughs> 2022 is 497,513, which is an increase of 17.9%. And that's off the budget itself, not the actual, right? That's right. The budget that was proposed and is in the town report. And so we what got was 138 the lapsing there? We have 138.8. And um, in your mailbox today, we do have a request from Transfer Station to. He's got one outstanding uh, invoice for $160. I just deducted it from what's there. So what's lapsing as of today is 138.8. Now, didn't you have a cutoff time on those? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, not out there for nothing, but it's a small amount of money. I myself think it's way past the cutoff time. And if you're allowing it for his department, you should be doing it. I mean, it doesn't make any sense that he's asking. Right, so what... We're way too far along in their budget to be changing numbers. The auditor does recognize invoices that come in three, four weeks after the year is closed. Only because things like your utility bills and other things that may be on a regular schedule don't necessarily come into the office, but it's an expense that was uh, spent in the prior year. I mean, if you want to do the paperwork, I guess you can, but I was going to deny that tonight. I, I was too, but the thing is... Um, she she made it seamless, and so uh, and she worked with Woody to make it seamless. I'm just giving you the number. You guys can say no, take it out of this year's budget. I know that there's. I just think it's so late that you know it's yeah. never going to stop. Well, I think is uh, it's I hard I'm, for us because the numbers change every week. You know, I know. So I, I, but the thing is, but once tonight, it's going to be cemented. Yeah, there's nothing after tonight. Okay, so you've got 138,000 here in lapsing budget as well. Correct. So that along with the revenues, which is 223338 combined, would be what we're looking at here. <clears throat> 138960. No, no, not 960. 8. No, 138960. 8. No, it's no, 8. 8. It's changed Go to down 8. To the next Go down column. to 8. Oh. So you go down to the next blue one? Oh, yeah, there's our change. <laughs> deduct, uh, deduct 160 off his next year's budget, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. one, one thing, one thing uh, uh, I, uh, I was discussing with Lane earlier. Um, you know, we plussed up personal lines quite a bit. Um, I like to, I like to consider um, as we move forward, holding the personal line, holding personnel amounts budgeted to personnel, not for private little projects that um, that any department wants to pursue. In other words, keep the personal lines personnel. I'm not following you. In other words, we budget every department. Uh, uh, they, they break it down, and a little significant of it, we raise. Rates. So let's say the transportation was three people this year. I don't want them taking it by another can crusher with that, for example. Oh, no. I want that personal line. If it's going to be returned, if it's vacant, it's going to be returned as a personal yeah. money. So it's the they, same as if Chris doesn't use his. Right. And he knows that. To the correct number? Yes. Okay, so we all agree here. 223. 223, 338. <clears throat> right? Yep, so you should have 362, 138. 796, so the combined lapsing surplus from the operating budget and the revenue comes to I have three six two one three two one thirty eight. I did old math on that. Me too, Mike. <laughs> so then um, I had to use my fingers a little bit, but I got it. The paperwork you have here shows that the um, rounded impact would be four dollars and thirty four cents. Let's see if I can get this right here. So that would be uh, budget from taxes is one million seven ninety six twenty eight divided by the 
2022 assessment comes to one four dollars and forty one forty two cents roughly and that's rounded and then last year's municipal tax rate was three dollars and eighty three cents so the estimated increase using the surplus would be fifty nine cents <coughs> And I did want What did you use there? Did you deduct it all? Yeah, I did. I changed the re excess revenue. Let's do this. Okay. Let's so the proposed budget's three million two eighty one eight eight ten. Got it. The proposed revenues, which we have on this sheet to offset the taxes here, is one million. 129.046. That's our new one. Yep. It's the new one. Got it. And then we have 138.8 from the lapsing operating budget. Got it. And then we have the revised excess revenue, 223.338. So I've taken and subtracted the projected revenues here, so bring our from taxes to 2,152.764. And then I've also subtracted the 138.8 and I've subtracted the 220. Three, What's your new number? Yep, we read the number. The new number is from taxes one million seven ninety six twenty eight. Okay. So you take that and you divide it by your twenty twenty two assessment, which will change. But as of if we're using this as a a guide, it comes to four forty one six four forty one six. So it would be rounded to four dollars and forty two cents for the. Municipal budget only. All right, minus three thirty-eight, <clears throat> and so that would be a fifty-nine cent increase. Originally, without that, without that correction, it would have been a ninety-six cent increase for just the operating budget. It was the one without so without bond, bond it's same. zero. But yeah, without the bond, it would be a flat budget. <laughs> Wait, are you using all the money though? Well, we're not touching what's in the surplus now. Right. And I didn't we just want to make sure our, uh, the rainy day fund stays at the appropriate percentage for this for the town. It's going to go down because our budget's going so up. So we can right. cross out the without bonds uh, um, line here because that would be zero. Yeah, but okay. And, uh, he well, she's going to redo it for us next week. Anyway, right. So this just for there's us. also there's also remember this this 16 new house permits. And so that's going to be into the uh, revenue. That's, a, that's another 140000 approximately for next year. When we set the tax, set the tax rate. rate. But that will be done in April. It will be, be for the June. It will hit the June tax rate. Yeah, but it won't get affected until we adjust the tax rate in October. Correct. We're probably going to be looking at about a $6 million revenues. Um, for new assessment, and that equates to about one hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. So There'll be something to deduct that. Final never comes out that way. <laughs> but even if even if I go ha worst case scenario, say forty percent, get forty cents on the, on that. This is where we're at right now. Four point two percent is in what's in our surplus. Four hundred seventy-eight thousand six sixty-eight. Of oh, and that's uncommitted that's, dollars. That's uncommitted dollars. We hadn't touched that. Now, I want you to do something else for me next week. That was like at 541000 Tell me how that deducted down like you did last year. It's a combination of the I want you to show war me. credits. It's complicated. I, I know it's complicated, but I want you to show you me. You want me to get the, the reasons why our... It was like 541000 in there last year, and I want to know why it's down to that amount. Have to look at the at the uh, auditors. I think the but auditor is it, is it recategorized some monies in our financial statement five thirty five. You cannot recategorize what we'd set aside for that. No, but some of it was uh, commit. Well, I don't want to mix it. No, with the rainy dollars. day fund, Mike. Was but five forty one non committed. But the DRA looks at looks at um, the non committed money and committed money in our in our in, in our fund. I believe the big change was the auditor took the stuff that's um, pending <clears throat> appeals. And took it out of the uh, uncommitted and moved it into, recategorized it into um, committed. That's what reduced our. Well, just show me. 
I, okay, I will. I just like to. we did the exercise last week, just so we know when somebody asks us, going to ask us a town meeting, and we can't sit there fumbling our thumbs. And it should be shown on the um, financial five thirty five. Yeah. Yeah. What, if people are going to. Why did it? Where did, where did an extra hundred thousand dollars go? Now we have you know, to, we set that rainy day fund aside, then they mess with it every year. It doesn't make any sense to well, me. Well, it's, it's you know? because, you know, it's, it's uh, they Laws change as far as how they can categorize certain things, and then they have to move an account. Um, Still doesn't help us budget for the town. But it's not the town. It's including everybody's budget, the county, the school, and the state. I know, but that's our surplus money, our town. Yeah, and I, and I realize. But, but it's got to cover everybody's. Yeah, the, and the so, some of it, the money is is the, which they include in that is committed already. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I would no, say encumbered. The five forty one was non committed. The whole amount last year. Right, right, sure. right. But there were there was additional funds which they include in that. Because previous years we had committed money in that right. surplus, and I made sure now, we took it all. Out. Now this year, what we want to discuss is: uh, Do we want to commit the entire amount here uh, of three sixty two? My thought is that we should, and we should. Correct that next year with our surplus from the additional houses and whatnot. So not use any of it towards uh, towards this rainy day rate. fund this year, and correct that next year because we're going to have those additional houses. Well, it's going to be this year, this tax it, year. It will be only because what happens when the tax rate is being set is that I have to run the MS one, which is a total assessment. The uh, the assessor will give us all the new values. We put them into the tax program. We run the MS one. And if our our property values increase from four hundred and five million up to four hundred and ten million, I have to use that number at tax right. rate setting. So which that would automatically give us a surplus in that. Well, it will automatically lower the tax rate for the taxpayers. Right, and it'll automatically give us more surplus in that fund. Our rainy day fund is going to go up. Our surplus is going to go up. So you you're adding six million dollars worth of additional. Right, revenue. but you use it at tax rate setting. Yeah. The new value, and that's why you'll see a drop in the tax rate. In other words, we don't get that money. It's just that either we keep the tax rate as it is, but they're going to drop the tax rate commensurate with, with the valuation. Correct. Do you follow? Yeah. In other words, we, we could, if we lower it now, um, but things... First, let's see what's... I want to see what I'll that I'll see changed. if I can get an answer from the auditor, because I know it has to do with... Uh, the auditor before them, we have... Um, the new ones now. The new ones now. They realized that how they were calculating our overlay, which lapses at the end of the year, just like unanticipated revenue, they were not car carrying it because it hadn't been settled yet. We had outstanding appeals you, you talked that about were this going from year to year yeah. to year. And because they, we were trying, we had to deduct that money from our rainy day funds so that we earmarked it to uh, encumbered, basically, funds so that it was there in the, in the event that we um, settle in any one of those years. I'm going to get some water just a moment, okay? So they moved, they moved um, some of that overlay that. Mike, want to grab me one if you're going all the way to the okay. other end? Thanks. We're running dry tonight. Okay, so once you I'm check that. Talking. <laughs> Once you check that, we'll be fine. I will check that. Hopefully I can get an answer for you. <clears throat> okay, so that's good and that's good. So you did the non-bond payment one, so we're good there. Okay, the board has to decide, though, or do you want to decide what you think on it, about what we're going to use yeah. to offset the operating budget. Because at this point, I still have the MS-636 yep. that has to be completed, and the numbers are reflective of... The revenues, which shouldn't change now because the, it, it is what it is, what we've set it for. But the operating budget is final. It's what we're using to offset the taxes that we have to Thank get. Thank you, Mike. Numbers. If I understand, Elaine, if what Dave's asking is like, in my, this, this, Dave, tell me if I'm wrong, but we had 500. Now it's accounted, and now it shows up as 400. Ways, what's the diff? Yeah. And, she, the money and she was able to give us an explanation last year because. We've had this happen several years in a row where that goes down, mm -hmm. and um, right, and what, just like we what, did what, what, last week, sometimes we found the money is in the wrong spot, and I want right. to check that. And what right. we monitor over, over Justin, for, we monitor. We like to target five percent of our operating budget. And that's what's recommended yeah. by the right. 
and for a town without many bonds. And right, and now we have a bond, so we want to make sure we have enough to cover a bond payment at least. Which we do. Oh, absolutely. So we're fine. Okay, okay. we're going to be redo we're reviewing this again next week. Um, but I will try to get it to you in advance so that if you have questions, you can... Yeah, I, th yeah, I think... Yeah, that worked out nice. Yeah. To me so yeah. that I can make sure I'm... Yeah, I just I think a good explanation of this would be helpful. If okay. you um, if you have that midweek, call me, Lee, and I'll come in and go through it with you. Okay. All right, like we did yep. last time. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, so we did that one. We did that one. And <coughs> budget warrant impact. So now that's going to change slightly because we're looking at more revenue. Do you want me to update the number that I have here? So right now I have in the yellow in the middle at the top, less revenue. That's the projected revenue for 2023. Lapsing operating budget 138.8. And then I'm going to change that. Excess revenue line. Excess revenue line to reflect the two. Uh, 223.380. 3.38. 3.38. 380, right? I have to do minus. No, it's not. So then, again, it brings our... 223, 338. Operating 338, budget. I stand correct. Oh. I'm going to correct that one, too. So that's going to um, decrease the operating budget from taxes down to the 442. So you can see how on this sheet here, it rounded to 4.1. All the um, warrant articles are halfway down, mm -hmm. listed as they are on the warrant. We're going to change the 10,000 and add the article. You just got to change numbering. Just the numbering, and it will be basically the still total 152. 792. Mm -hmm. And so the total operating budget with warrants will be an impact of, let's see here, 480. 442. $5.07 if you include the overlay and the war credit impact. Which uh, columns have on the right side? So the operating budget with surplus is going to be 4.42. The warrant articles are 36 cents, which brings you up to four dollars and seven seventy-seven cents. Last year's tax rate setting was 3.83, so it's an increase of. Does that look like it's adding up, right? 4.42. You can just print this out again next week, Lane. You don't have to yeah. give us all the numbers tonight. Okay. Let's see. We're going to rush through it. <coughs> we're there, we're, we're going to be there. For me. Yeah. We're all trying to we know it'll go less, not higher. So. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, it'll be like uh, $73,000 worth less. Yeah. Probably well, 150 less. 150 is better. Mike. All right, so if we... See, so you already can't remember. <laughs> just want to remind you that next week is the last week to... Finalize it finalize the budget, hopefully I can get these numbers right for you. And then in the event we get anything like a petition warrant article, we um, may want to have to hold a, a workshop just to review what that. Is there anything in the pipeline that you know of? I haven't heard of single Well, if Chris thing. locked them up for a couple months. Right. <laughs> if there's no money value, I just add it to the end of the warrant. Um, but the board should be aware that it's going to be added, and, and we have to verify the signatures on it through town clerk's department. So, um, okay, let's move Good. on. Mailbox. Mailbox items. All right. Um, the annual report uh, for board BOA. Board of assessors. Yeah. Extra cost for printing? Is this uh, the picture? It can't be Board of Accessors. Yeah, some, that's... Oh, well, basically, that 
It is. First one there. Oh, I'd like to print picture. it in color. Okay. Color's going to be a few cents more times the number of reports that we have. Okay. But I've compared the, the black and gray scale and that one. Look behind the third sheet. And it just doesn't do it justice. Sure. Okay. It's a black and white picture. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay with that. Yeah. yeah. No, consensus. Go for it. All right. Yep. And just, uh, just on double, just check, double on check spelling. That. Yeah. yeah. On that name, no spelling. please. Yep. Spelling the name. Okay. It's funny, she commented on it and she didn't say anything that was wrong, so I wasn't sure correct. <laughs> she was just very excited to be. She's going on to Woody's email. Okay, yeah. Going uh, on the board and. She didn't correct my spot. Okay. <laughs> Next one is that we got an uh, email from uh, Mr. Woody Bond, transportation, which Lean already addressed the uh, the fuel charge already taken care of. Thank you, Lean. Am I uh, am I leaving it in the budget? Yes. You have yeah. done now, so. But I think as I agree with Dave, sometimes the red line was drawn. Yeah. And I think is uh, it, it would have been no brainer just to leave it. If, if you was if it was next week, I would have not okay, accepted it. So if it you didn't take care of it so quick, and have the paperwork done, mm -hmm. you would have said no. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Um, He's got a bunch of general maintenance items on there, Mike, which yep. I, I think those are items we're going to address one by one throughout the year. I mean, I know he likes to give us a heads up on it. Yeah, I appreciate that. But like those roofing panels and stuff. Yeah. Again, he's going to have to get quotes and we have to go from there. Yeah. He's, what he's got to do is prioritize what he wants to get done. That's right. And then uh, come to us he with He keeps proposals. asking for shade in there, but didn't he ask for the light in there originally? He did, With those panels. they didn't know it was going to be quite as hot. What we're probably going to end up doing is getting some opaque panels to lay on top of the clear panels to keep it somewhat shaded for them. Yeah. Okay, but he's got a... All right, next item. Um, I got a variety of complaints from a resident on, um, uh, on Kelsey Road regarding the plowing. I've already talked to the road agent about it. I've talked to the town administrator about it. There is more emails today, which I, I think I'm going to share with you gentlemen. Um, I'm just I'm getting fed up with it. I want to seek uh, some assistance from town attorney because this is getting ridiculous. Uh, the road agent is almost feel like his hands are tied. He can't even make a plowing in this scenario. And um, he's put uh, markers on the ground. Uh, the road agent is not a surveyor. He doesn't trust them. He doesn't believe the resident is a surveyor. He doesn't trust them. And um, so we're going to get some town attorney uh, input. This, give us some guidance what we can do, what we can't do next. But he's going to continue, Jeff is going to continue to do the best job he can as a professional plowing. But he's probably going to do it himself, just an FYI, uh, because he doesn't want to, um, his, he feels like his crew is getting intimidated. He doesn't want his crew intimidated, so he may personally go up there and take care of the plowing up there. Okay? Just to give yeah. you a situational awareness there. Yeah. And uh, I know the police chief was involved here, and uh, so you're aware of what's going on. Uh, there was some language in one of his emails. I'm a little concerned about safety, and that's one reason why I want to pursue um, what we should or should not do. I'll leave it at that. But I want to get some legal guidance here because it just uh, it bothers me a little bit. All right, continuing on for the next item. Uh, we've got a request for uh, an officer, Tyler, to uh, withdraw his tuition reimbur reimbursement because he's not pursuing it. Too busy? Oh, that, that, I was going to say, that's not yeah. that Chris's that's Chris. request. Ah. <laughs> Too busy. Yeah, I appreciate the board's support. I, I uh, realize I just I don't have the time, and I when I do that, I just want to make sure I'm 100 percent committed. So, um, for the record, I did adjust that line in the budget, reduced it based on this email. So all right. The numbers you were looking at were accurate. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Great. So it's been so adjusted. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, community senator fund. This is the most confusing email I've had to date. Uh, I mean, I hear complaints, I hear other things, but I got an uh, email from the from Clem Madden about the and Dwayne Dwayne Ford about the community center fund. I don't know what they want. I think the fund is at, at max amount, like Lean said, because uh, okay, it's a thousand dollars from each of us per year, really and <laughs> with a ten thousand dollar max. Okay, and without having spent any of the money. They're at the max, and they're asking us if we have any needs that we want as a board of selectmen, but I can't think of any. Okay. So we as need of over there. December 30, uh, 31st of 2021, they had $7,334. Okay. 
We gave them a thousand last June and July. They contributed, so that brings them up to just under ten grand. And they're basically saying they're not going to put their request to raise from the <coughs> orders because they would exceed the maximum. Okay. Then, then we will comply and not add additional monies this year. Correct. So okay. they don't need our money for this year. Okay. That's what I understand. Okay. okay. That's what we'll do. All right. Okay. Next item, uh, uh, Dave uh, came through, and uh, he's got to re talk to the Irish Electric, and we have re reduced. Uh, they've reduced invoices to us as an additional item of purchase, and uh, for the Walls concerts. For the Walls concerts. They're waiting to hear back from you on that. So yeah. I'd say we. Okay. We have no problem with it approving it now. The minutes halfway. Okay. Um, do you want to make a motion to accept that? Yeah, I make a motion to approve the. Uh, I make a motion to approve the Irish Electric revised invoice for for wall sconces in the library edition, in the amount of twenty four seventy five. Do I hear a second, Dave? I'll second it. Any further discussion on this one? No. Nope. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just for everybody's uh, notice, that's been talked about for a couple weeks now. That was absolutely. He was on vacation, so she said as soon as he got back, she would get that information. Okay, community action request. We got a. This is the community action program for Belknock, Merrimack counties. They're asking for more money. Yeah, they've had the same budget amount for the like the last ten years, is twenty three fifty, and now they're asking for three thousand. You can see the report that. Did you address the budget for it? I did. Already. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't mind budget increases, but how much are they asking? They're looking for 3000 instead of twenty three. Okay, okay, okay. So it's only $650. Okay. It looked like it went up to 3000 3000 I looked at that, yeah. too. Okay, so had to think a double take. Oh, is that what you got from that? Yeah, I thought it was from six fifty to 3000 three thousand. Uh -huh. I was going to say, that's not quadruple. Yeah. No, that's fine. Oh, I think it's a gentleman. I want a motion. Can you make a motion on that? To raise that? Yeah. No, we don't have to make a motion. Is there a motion on that? It's, it's just no. a I think it's upgrade. just, if you want, if you chose to leave it at the 2350, right. and we'd have to let them know that we're going to give you this much money. They're just basically asking for additional monies for and, us. And I think it's it's to see if the town will vote. To... Oh, it's in parentheses on the... That's a community thing. action for the... Uh, the yeah. welfare director works with them quite a bit. Yeah. That's the only service besides the well, we have um, church and the Salvation Army that we fund for through our budget lines. We have consensus. They, they, they just for this just for the record, they've had more than 19 Dunbarton house Dunbarton households have been helped through fuel, electric, and food assistance, and they provided uh, fifty-three thousand dollars worth of assistance to our Dunbarton residents. So we're investing, we say three thousand dollars, and we're helping our residents by fifty-three thousand. I think that's a good return on our investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, we need more like that. Okay, <laughs> investments, yeah. Um, we have a issue with um, a, we have a no parking ban effective uh, November fifteenth through April first. It's in our policy letters. That was approved, uh, I believe, recently and updated recently. Yeah. And um, I, I see the, uh, the police chief sent out a response to. Um, on my behalf. On your behalf. We had one of the um, independent contractors stop in the office and ask um, us if we had the parking ban in effect still. And when I reviewed the policy, it was clearly there, and you guys have just updated it uh, last year. So um, I forwarded it to the police department and asked if his advice for how do we address getting the people aware of there is a no parking ban in town. So I, I, I think uh, if you could... Um, Draft something for the public and put it on a website. It's already there. Thank no you. parking on the streets. Yep. I didn't yep. realize Did we had that. Did you know that? that? No. Yeah. So, I didn't know either. So yeah, we're, we're, we'll be learning now. Now we know. <laughs> that may help you on some of the enforcement part of it. You know. <laughs> you get calls. <laughs> okay. So we, it's been taken care of. Mary decided to go uh, uh, purchase some rugs for the for the um, for the library. Now she wants reimbursement for it. This is uh, what. Mary Gerard, yeah. Under her budget, right? No, she's, she's asking, asking for it. She asked for reimbursement. She asked for reimbursement. told her to go buy them. I hey, you are implicated here. <laughs> this isn't black and white. 
Let me read it. I, I, I think... I'll read it for you, Dave. I do tell you to go buy them out of her budget. After discussion of this purchase with Dave Nolan, I personally purchased through Amazon. After this purchase for new entry out of the building out, I will turn in the receipt and ask for a reimbursement of $249.95. I bought one other for the water hog entry for the use of the library door. The library would pay for it. Dave, you commit money again. That's that's $249. Plus shipping is $599. She didn't include it, but she's shipping. Amazon has Prime. No, but we don't. We're not a Prime customer. Yeah. <laughs> we are. She she went through. She Perfect. got a good deal. She did. She got a good deal. It's gone up. Doesn't sound it. <laughs> so they were two forty nine. There was shipping. It was five ninety nine. Yeah. No. How can you? <laughs> shipping was five ninety nine. They put your hand out again. Oh, five dollars and ninety nine. Yeah. Five dollars. <laughs> oh, okay. So is it the total? Does the total come up to two fifty four or something? The only thing I haven't seen them yet. But she ordered water hog, and water hogs have a great um, trench for water, but they actually don't clean your feet very well. So um, I think that even though that was nice for Mary to get these, I think we're going to need a different type of mat, actually. You can't put them on the outside of the building because the doors are out swings now. So they kind of... So they have to be on the inside. And they I, put I, tile I, in there, I can not see, rugs. I, can, I so. can see two types of carpeting, one and then another one there. I think so. I think that's the kind that we have here, and then we have uh, just a very gnarly one right outside the door, so it brushes your feet. So, so the quick, back a quick so email question is, say, Dave said it's okay out of your budget. <laughs> <laughs> she's looking for a reimbursement to her, so uh, that should come out well, of our building. She's going to uh, send appropriate re uh, receipts in, yeah. and then we can pass it on to Suckman Dave for payment. I did, <laughs> I did remind her that... Um, in the future, if she gets the direction from one selectman, she should get her quotes and come to the office, and then we can discuss it and take it to the next level for the board. Yeah, I think that whole thing being tile shouldn't be. All right. But it is. Dave, you can't be spending money like this now. I just did, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you approved it. No, I approved this one. I think I got to tell you. All right. We're okay to reimburse her. With, yeah, and uh, have her acknowledge uh, to you in, that she will not do this in the future without appropriate quotes and I, all that kind of stuff. We did discuss it. Okay. We don't keep a personnel fire on her, do we? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, got got <laughs> another, another one here from uh, Dave. You've done it again. Did you authorize this expense to nope. have it shipped overnight? Nope. Didn't. I'll speak to it. <laughs> the... Um, George Luker from Irish Electric has been waiting for that guts to the panel he has installed for the 400 amp panel downstairs. He called and canceled it a week or so ago and went with a different panel company, Square D. As you talked to us. Yep. And he got a phone call right after he did that, and these guys said, hold on, George, because they're taking all their business from the company for delaying them so long on this panel and another job. And... Um, we can have this panel shipped to you right away. So he held off again, and guess what? They missed their date this week. So he has a, if you read the emails here, I just wanted him to give us a copy of the email chain all the way through. Um, he's supposed to know in the morning if they're going to overnight him the panel. If they're not, he's going to go to the square D panel. So in other words, the, the company's begging them. To, to stay with him because yeah. he's going to take all his business away from them. Okay. He did want to make us aware the Square D panel is $1,450 more. That's why he's kind of waiting for this one and would rather stay with him. Okay. So we can avoid the cost increase. So that's all that notice for. So it's more of an information. It's not going to increase <clears throat> just if. If they don't supply it to him and ship it overnight tomorrow morning, he's going to call us back and then we'll... Then we'll have a price increase. It's pen, It's uh, possible. Okay. And uh, I'm not sure that we should pay that still because it's, it's the same size panel, a different vendor, and if he could have gotten that panel from a different vendor... I mean, we were a full year the town's been waiting for this. He should have done it now, before is that, this. This is separate from the, from the library, um, the, 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 the addition. No, it is part of the addition work. Okay, so... It's got to go through a process. Well, how is Mr. Chacoin acting? We're looking at this. No, he's not happy about it. Okay. Um, so 
I'm not sure if Chicoin's going to make them eat it or what he's going to do, but um, let's just see what happens tomorrow. He said in the morning we'll know if it gets okay. shipped. Okay. So he kind of put them on the chopping block again for another week, but I told him today, I said, here we are out another week. We talked about this two weeks ago, and it just keeps going on and on okay. and on. Justin, remember my date, April 1st? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record, I'm saying it's I'm, I have a target date of completion of April first. Um, Dave thinks it's going to be like tomorrow. It won't be. I don't really assume. I've moved the architect's inspection off. The, this is the third week now. Okay. We're set up to inspect it next Thursday. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, keep it, keep going. Keep going. We're speaking of the uh, the, uh, the town report cover photo. Okay. So the board approved the the, the cover. Right. Which obviously we're holding off on to get the door installed and show that it's been paved. But what Don would like to do, and I'm not sure if Dave, that was uh, you were in agreement, is on the inside front covers, put another color page Close. of photos. Are you guys okay with that? That's at a cost, which is fine, but... Um, I'm okay with that lean. I was actually going to come up one row of photos and thank the Casanos and Merrimack Drywall for their donations, but Mike already... Um, had put a brief thing in the selectman's description. Okay, so you fill it um, with the photos? Yeah, I think so. I like them. The question you want color or black and white? Is I there think a big there color? Be color. Oh, color for sure. Yeah, because it takes You guys know no appreciation for black and white. <laughs> I, I'm ambivalent. Okay, uh, we have consensus. Make it happen. Two. Why is version two? Why is it version one? Well, they've got different photos, photos in there. Did she thought that the, the photos were too small in the first one, so the second one had larger photos? I think yeah. the second one larger. What do you think? I didn't see them yet. I was going to say, which ones? They just they both look the same. They both look the same to me. There's one bigger photo at the bottom on that other one. I'd say version two. Yeah, version yeah, two. Version two. Version two. So it is. Yeah. So be version it. two. It is. Okay, moving right along. All right. Since we cut Chief's budget, he's decided to sell off some of the firearms in the police department. <laughs> Do they have serial numbers? Did you scrape no. them off? No, he's grinding them all off. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take one then. <laughs> They're in J's. They're uh, pretty pretty old shotguns. Uh, Approximately 20 years old, we decommissioned them, and we're upgrading our handguns um, to a new new platform with some red dot sights. Um, so I was uh, respectfully requesting to take that money towards the cost of our new handguns. Okay. Uh, so yeah. the check is made out to? Town of Dumbarton. Oh, it is the town of Dumbarton. How and much is it? You're going to thousand dollars. the unanticipated revenue, which is what you're mm -hmm. getting here, and put it towards... He's asking us, uh, Chief is asking us to, re re the board accept $1,000 for the budget line of equipment so we can, he can apply it towards the first so we'll to make a motion. Yeah, yeah we so we, unanticipated revenue right. so that. I'll make a motion to accept $1,000 in un unanticipated revenues um, from Jay's Gun Shop. And I'd like to earmark the $1,000 for the purchase of new firearms. Um, that the police chief picks out. I'll second that. In discussion, uh, does that mean we drop your budget by $1,000, your equipment line? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. It, it, it cost of everything went up. <laughs> okay. That was a little bit of humor. I, yeah. Okay. Um, then all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Thank you. And thank you for using a local gun shop, too. I'm glad you took it. Yeah, took, he, he helps us out a lot with transfers. And okay. Stuff. He's, he's great. Good. Yeah, and there's a benefactor who's actually, who works there that actually have, has helped at your uh, department. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and we have to sign. Oh. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it took what, me, is it, it all three or just one? I think it's. Uh, I think it's all. They're usually all three. I think the initials are just one. Okay. The first page, I think, is a couple signatures. Okay. Uh, uh, this is a. We talked about it last week, I believe, but uh, uh, we got a New Hampshire Department of Justice grant in the amount of twelve thousand one hundred two dollars and forty five cents uh, from the. From, as I said, from New Hampshire Department of Justice, and these, this money is going to be used to fund tasers and related accessories, two ballistic rifle shields. There's no, no local match, so it's pure money coming to the par department. Those are the ones I like, Chris. The, those are really those are the ones. I'm adding two to my list, Dave. First, first grant here that we. 
And the unanticipated revenue, that's another, the other account. Okay, yeah. he's going to buy a third taser and shield out of his budget, so there'll be three on staff. The two of them will be paid for by completely by this grant. Uh, do, do, I don't think we, we have to accept it. So we've already accepted it, I believe, last time, last visit. Did we I don't think you did. No, then I'll, I'll make a motion that we accept the $12,102.45 from the New Hampshire Department of Justice uh, for police equipment. I'll second that. I'll third it. Any further discussion on this? Aye. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All right, we, aye. Aye. we sign it now. Thank you. Thank you for, no, you're the grant master, remember? Are we going to want the minutes too? Uh, yeah, the minutes and the certificate of authority. Mike. And I'll, I'll send everything out and I'll scan it another with that. <clears throat> Can we get a stamp? No, I just got a stamp. <laughs> okay, why, why I'm signing it, why don't we, uh, uh, we, you read the report that I gave, the Suckman's report. Are you gentlemen happy with that? No. No? You want? I was just thinking. Do you want to thank Merrimack Travel? Yeah, that's that? what I want to do. Okay. I mean, it's not, it's not it's obviously not as much money as the Casanos, but if it's you could still just put there. something in there. Yep. Merrim just, it's called Merrimack Drywall? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And it's a Dunbarton. The Dunbarton residence, long time Dunbarton residence. Do we have a name so, or just do yeah. you have a name? Keys for the phone. For the phone. Can't you just write the name down? I'll insert that. He spells know. Gee Guy. Yeah. I don't remember his wife's name. I'll get, I have this email, Michael. You do? Name. Okay. With his name. Merrimack Drywall is Gee Philippon. Gee yeah. Philippon. Philippon? Yep. It's been a tough night. Even my pen is bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, won't you fill in for me and take it around the room for comment? Okay. Sign mine while you're right there. <laughs> um, let's go to public comment first, Bob. We got a Bob Martell of Lincoln, whatever damn road. And I was glad to hear that you've increased the uh, government budget, uh, you know, the uh, maintenance yep. budget. As you know, for several years we've been trying to catch up. We're getting things fixed and we're finding some things are falling apart quicker than we thought. Yep. And uh, the very least, if it's not all used in a year to fix things, it comes back to the town anyway. Yep. So, I mean, I think it's a good idea to have enough money to take care of the situation so the costs don't increase like so many other things that we put yeah. off for. A couple of the major things that we have, Bob, that you know about. We've got the uh, fire department, police department building roof. We have a new sign out front that's needed for that building for you guys. Um, we've got the highway department roof repair um, that blew off and we also have the pumps down at the highway department need to be upgraded um, and the concrete and pavement around them. And down at the transfer station, I guess we got some crumbling concrete and pavement there that, you know, the pavement ha may happen the following year, but we may patch it this year and then next year overlay the whole thing. And then a couple of roof items and the painting we've pushed off at the transfer station a couple of years now that it's getting there that we need to follow up on that painting there as well. So yeah, We've talked about a roof roof here as well. So yeah. roof we've here, got quite a few roofs we've got to tackle. Stone around that that building over there as well so, so and i think uh, whoever is going to be speaking on that i think uh, I, I hope that the legislative body shares the same sentiments because if we let things go it doesn't take very long that it becomes so expensive that it's hard to sell right. getting it repaired so. yeah. yeah and i know last year by cutting it back you know we were doing that for the voters for other reasons to make sure to get that right building addition through and whatnot, but it was a tight year having that. We had to watch our money very, very closely. And, uh, you know, we did push some things to the following year for that reason. And I think uh, it's wise to get them caught up before we cut it back again. Thank you, Bob. Chris? Thank you. Lean? Coming back to the board, Justin? Don't have anything. Um, I'll give just a quick update on the... Um, Town Hall edition. The doors for the front entrance have all been prepped. 
Um, they were hoping that Irish Electric would finish up in there before they put them on, but I talked with Bobby today, and his next snow day, he's going to put them on the building here regardless so we can get that picture taken care of. Um, the painter's been in, that painting is all done, the flooring is all done. Um, I haven't checked the bath hardware this week, but they did have a couple guys in there working this week, so I think the bath hardware is done. So as soon as Irish Electric finishes that panel, we can test the sprinkler system and the elevator and everything else is functional. The uh, phone company was in there, did their work, so we're in good shape there. Um, there's an additional um, line that's needed for the modem for the monitoring of the elevator and the IT guy from Mary is going to make sure that that's taken care of with the telephone company. And I think that's all I have. I have an appointment scheduled with the architect for a final walkthrough and their punch list um, next Thursday at 9 a.m. Is that Gary Chicoin? No, that's the uh, Chicoin will be there, the architect, myself as a selectman's oh, rep, okay. and Bobby will be there. And the architect will pick apart anything they see that's not up to standard and give Chicoin a punch list so that they can turn the project over to the Please town. pass on to Mr. Chicoin. I was very impressed with the fact that he turned down the tile twice, wasn't happy with the quality. And uh, he's making sure we get quality product installed. And he may, may call the contractor in twice to get it done. Have you yeah. seen any more problems with the downspout on the... Uh, I haven't. I was going to check it now that all that snow came. Yeah. So I'll check that. I, don't, I can't. Every time I drive by, I'm looking for it and I can't see it. Is it built in the wall somewhere? It it's built in the wall. It comes out right to the left of the door. Okay. So that's the secondary one, yep. and they want it by the door, so if you see water coming out of it, you'll know there's an issue. Where the primary one comes out on the right side of the building and comes down here. So, that, uh, I was going to check it, because I know there's a lot of snow up there on that roof now. It's doing what we want it to do. But I think what happens is the snow is right over the hole, and as it melts, it's going in that pipe. Is the stamp even legally binding? I know a lot of companies use stamps. <laughs> I think that's the longest contract I've seen for a grant anyway that we've gone after. That's pretty long. I think a stamp would look a little cleaner for my signature. <laughs> Get pretty what's, yeah, what's our address they here? They all look alike, though, every time. Address? Yeah, they look school street, I thought. 10 11 school. I'm going to put the town of Dunbarton. Then I'll put slash police department. Perfect. Did you have anything for? Um, just that uh, I want to pursue the. Uh, I'm going to work with Lean to get all the emails that we were sent by that angry resident, and I want to pass them on to the uh, uh, our town council for uh, not immediate, but I want a timely response to what we should or should not do from here on out. Um, We've heard the term going postal, and I don't want that to happen in this town. I'm sorry to say I say that. I say that reluctantly. I say it in public reluctantly, but the thing is I'm concerned about the safety of everyone who has to deal with this gentleman. And I think it's God forbid anything happens. I hope it doesn't. Uh, but the thing is I'm thinking about the safety of all residents. Okay. That's all I had for the group. And I think it's, I think we have a motion going on public, gentlemen. I'll wait till we finish okay. signing I'm this. just about done. Actually, we can keep signing that one. No, yes. yes. Kaminsky, yes. I'll read the motion, Mike, like actually. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I'll make a motion to go into non public per RSA 91 A. Paragraph 3, Roman numeral 2. Um, paragraph A under Christopher, Christopher Remillard, Police Chief. We'll give a two minute recess to shut off the public power. And the time is? One time is 8.39. Yep, 8.39. Jay Nolch, yes. D. Nolch, yes. Kaminsky, yes. Yes. I don't know how to spell Philippon, how he spells it. You'll have to look at his email. Yeah. P-H-I-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L-O-L